Welcome, this is the Clay Golem and this is a slightly different series. We're going to be looking at using above VTT to run our Dungeons and Dragons uh, games as a DM um, as opposed to our Foundry series. Now the challenge with Foundry is it is really good. Go watch that series if you've not, um, what you can and can't do. Um, but the problem is it's quite detailed. It takes a fair amount of time to set everything up. Um, which is great from a point of view of how detailed it is, but not everybody's got the time to put that effort in and you have to pay for it. So to look at an, another option that you can do for running your virtual games, um, one that I am very familiar with and I've used quite a lot is Above VTT, which is an extension for the Chrome browser. So limitations are you have to have the Chrome browser and you have to use that and so do all of your players. Now, it's quite easy to get going. Um, all you need to do is in your Chrome browser is you'll need to do a Google search for above VTT and it will bring you to this screen where you can add this on as an extension. Now you can see mine says remove from Chrome because I've already got it installed. You need to install that extension um, and that's kind of all of the setup you really need to do. Once you've got that installed in um, in your Chrome browser, if you go to uh, dndbeyond.com, this is where you can create your campaigns, uh, your players can create their characters, etc. And as you can see, I'm in Beyond uh, D&D Beyond right now, and this is my campaigns that I've got, and I've created one called Above VTT World for the purposes of looking at this. So if I go to view this campaign, it's going to bring up this screen. If you've used Beyond D&D, you'll be familiar with this anyway. But I've got some extra buttons here that you won't have if you haven't got Above VTT installed. For example, uh, I've got this button here that allows me to join this campaign as the DM because it's my campaign. Uh, and a link that I can send under there, uh, a link that I can send so that my players can join this campaign. Uh, and therefore access in beyond, uh, sorry, above VTT. So um, what I want to do for this campaign above VTT, well, before I join it, I'm going to create an unassigned pre-made character. Okay, so very quick and easy, I can get going. Who should we pick? Uh, let's pick the elf wizard. Um, where's the button? So it's the one underneath, so yeah, that create there. And that is instantly going to create this character for me as part of my campaign. Now what you will see is where this character is in. Um, so this is an, uh, beyond, uh, beyond, sorry, this is a D&D &D Beyond character stored on D&D &D Beyond. But I have this button to be able to join above VTT. Again, this is what the extension does. It allows me to join a game and as a DM at the top here, allow me to join as DM. So I'm gonna join as DM because we need to do setup and things. So just clicking that, it comes through, brings us up our splash screen. Okay, and close that. And this is our main interface. Uh, now this is defaulted and brought in a, a tavern scene for us. So quick, uh, quick guide through uh, above VTT for you. Up the top left, we've got our um, our various things that we can use for setting up our maps, moving around. So select is about selecting our characters. We've got a ruler if we need to measure. Fog of War, and we touched briefly on that in another video um, about the fact that we can reveal everything, hide everything, or we can reveal or hide in sections. We've got, this is relatively new, this has only come out in the past few weeks, uh, a much better walls um, ability, so we can draw walls, block light, and things like that. It's much, much more simple than the Foundry one, um, but it's useful, it does work. Uh, light and vision, so we can create areas of light um, and things. Uh, not hugely functional. Um, again, it's something that's continually being worked on and improved. We've got some basic drawing tools, so we can draw you know, cones and things like that for spells if we need to. Uh, I'll just get rid of that. Um, we've got text, so we can write directly on there. We've got area of effect shapes, so we've got, uh, we've got a circle for area of effect, and we can place that wherever we need to. Okay, so we can do things like that. Uh, and then there's a help button. There's also a combat tab for us when we're running our combat. We've not really looked at that in Foundry um, yet, but we will look at both of those at some point and compare combat methods in both. 
On the right hand side here, just above our map screen, we have some controls here that enable us to do things like lock, um, lock tokens. So we can select tokens and lock them so characters can't move them or interact with them. We can center on player ping. So if a player double clicks anywhere, you can see it produces a ping here. Um, and with that on, a player can draw everybody's attention to that and move everybody's map to that location. Um, We've got this pause players bit here, so we can pause the game so players can't move their tokens and things. Interestingly, the default is play. Um, foundry, the default is pause. Doesn't matter, does the same thing. Uh, selected token vision, we can turn on or off. So in Foundry, when we select a token, it automatically shows us what they can see, um, even though we're logged in as DM. Um, we have an option to toggle that on or off here. And we've got a button that fits it to screen. We can zoom our map in and out, however we want to do that. And holding down right button, we can just drag the map around. So if we've got a larger map, you know, we might be zoomed out a bit. We can drag to where we want. We can zoom in. We can center it, whatever we want to do. So navigating around the map space is really, really easy. Uh, next to that, we have our chat log here. So this is just basically uh, a chat log where we can type whatever we want. Uh, and all the player characters can do that. And any dice rolls appear in chat log, very similar to Foundry. Um, again, not so sophisticated. This tokens tab, very similar to, um, to the actors tab that you find in Foundry, where we've got uh, a folder, uh, I've got a folder for players, a folder for all the monsters, and this is automatically bringing in all of the monsters available to you on D&D Beyond. So any registrations, any um, any books you've purchased, etc., you've got access to all those monsters because this is a extension that directly accesses uh, D and D Beyond. So we don't need any add-ons to be able to do that for us. Uh, they're all here, and just like with Foundry, I can take any of these monsters. I can I've got a search up here, so I can search for my for my uh, goblin, find my goblins, and I can. Whoops, a daisy, didn't mean to actually click on it. Uh, I can just drag him over, and there we go, goblin. And it's automatically created a, um, a default type of token for them. So I can drag those goblins on and fill my scene really simply. Uh, just like in Foundry, I can drag and drop and move these, um, you know, during combat, etc., just as I would. Uh, double clicking on them doesn't actually do the same as it does in Foundry, but I can right click once. And this gives me some menu options. You know, just come in and have a play with those. I don't want to spend too long going through some of these details, but, um, but everything's here. I can call up that goblin stat block. Uh, and directly from there, if I want to, I can go to its scimitar attack. Just click on that plus four. It's going to make that dice roll for me. And you'll see that this has gone red at the top right. It's popped that roll in the chat. Now, by default, my DM rolls are all set to, um, to private. Um, to only roll to self and then I can if I choose to share that with my players so uh, I think that's a good default to have for a DM is not to share your roles sometimes we need to tweak roles and sometimes we don't want them to know what we've rolled um, passive perception uh, and things like that so everything is in there we can call up those stat blocks uh, let's say that hit we can then roll our damage and again that's going to appear in the chat block there now there is no function where it will automatically apply damage to whoever you're hitting there is no uh, sort of targeting system like there is in foundry so it's a lot more simplistic but that's not necessarily a bad thing um, it's just different and remember this is a free thing uh, which is really good so anyway back to our top at the right here we got our tokens as we saw um, my players folder is empty at the moment uh, because I haven't uh, added that player yet. Um, and I've got a scenes folder here. So this is going to be all of my scenes. And at the moment, I've only got the tavern. Now, what is really interesting in uh, above VTT that is different from Foundry is you have two versions of every scene. You have a Dungeon Master's version and a player's version. So what that means is you can have a Dungeon Master's map that's got all of your notes on, secret doors and everything else, so that the Dungeon Master can see that map while the players are looking at a version that doesn't have all that. Um, and that can be really handy. So when we created Stormwreck Isle in Foundry, we ended up putting all of our, ex our putting journal entries onto our map that only the DM could see. 
um, and we did it that way so that we all were looking at the same map but some of the features of the map were hidden in above VTT you don't need to do that you can absolutely just show your map to yourself as the DM and the players can't see or they can see a completely different version of it okay so um, I can with any of these by the way I can right click and go to hide token to make them non-visible so we've got our two goblins one of them players can see the other goblin the players can't okay so again at our top right here we have some sound controls now these are limited there are some sounds uh, door yeah <laughs> they're, they're quite basic um, I think it's a bit of a work in progress um, you are able to import sounds and things but to be honest I don't use them um, they're not sophisticated enough uh, we're not dropping sound locations onto our map like we can in Foundry we have no ne nowhere near that level of sophistication here but that's that's fine um, horses for courses as they say uh, the next tab here is our um, our notes tab. So this is equivalent to journal. So we can create this. Um, we can create this, call it intro and add a chapter. Okay, which effectively is a folder. And then into there we can, uh, I thought that would allow me to, I thought that would allow me to add another one, but it doesn't. What is really cool though, because this links directly to D&D uh, &D Beyond, we see at the top here there is select a source to import so we can automatically drag in information into our notes area here so if i click on this look at this everything i've got access to in dnd beyond so the basic rules plus anything i've purchased is all here uh, and if i scroll down towards the bottom um, we should be able to find no hang on a minute what's it called get it right uh, somewhere in here is going to be uh, the Dragons of Stormwreck Isle. See if you can find it before I do. I'm sure it's going to be in here. Da, 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 da. It's not necessarily in right order, is it? Just to make our life slightly more difficult. Tales of the Awning Portal. Tomb of Annihilation, The Lost Mine of Fandelva, Fandelva and Below. Uh, ah, there we go. Ah, so it's under Dragons of Stormwreck Isle. Here it is. Okay, so if I click on this, sorry about that, that took a little while to find. Look at this. It's just bought in the entire adventure, running the adventure. If I click on that, it pops out this page. It's right here in front of me in a new window. Uh, Dragon's Rest. Here is the module. So when we're looking at Foundry and I said that when I run it, I'll have on a second screen, I'll have the adventure open. Um, but we could create journal entries for all of those individual things. So we didn't need to have a second screen um, with this. I can just import the whole module and I can slide that over to my other screen um, if I want to. Oh, um, I can just slide it over to my other screen, have that available over there. In fact, if I pop it out properly. If I pop it out properly then I can just slide it over to the other screen there we go um, out the way and I can reference that whenever I want I think that is absolutely brilliant the fact that that pulls that in it's just really really good all my magic items are here for this adventure uh, for me to reference etc so that's a really really good thing that you can't easily do with foundry I'm sure there are add-ons to do that but we saw that when we were looking at um, DDB importer we could import plenty of stuff, but some of those things were not available unless you're a patron. It's just part of the package with above VTT. So it's very much horses for courses with this. Uh, the last tab at the top right here is our settings where we can do all sorts of things. And there's some options down here about showing that splash screen. Measure while dragging tokens. I'm going to click that on. Um, steaming dice rolls. And look, there's little pop-ups for each of these. Um, so fetch monster stat blocks yes every time so every time I want to right click and just go to stat block bam it brings it up for me straight away so I haven't got to go look for it in the adventure and things it's just there on my screen right in front of me um, so turning on the um, measure while dragging now if I drag this can you see it's telling me how far it's moved now in foundry we had to use an add-on to do that uh, but this is built in so again 
you know, nice little function, really useful. Think something I think is really important if you're going to play with tokens. Um, you need to kind of have that on. So that's a very very quick kind of tour of the of how it looks and the functions it does have. But um, don't want to spend huge amounts of time and go over our normal sort of time on this one video. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating the beginnings of Stormwreck Isle. And we're going to do that. I know we've done that in Foundry, but that's the point. Is So side by side, you can see what's involved in setting up that same adventure in the two different systems. So in here, in my scenes, I can create folders and I can create scenes within those folders. So I'm going to create a new folder here. I'm going to call it, and I'm going to get it right this time, Stormwreck Isle. Okay, I'm not going to call it Shipwreck Isle. I'm going to save that folder. And as you can see, I can open and close that folder. I can create new folders within it, or I can create new scenes. I'm going to create a new scene. And it is allowing me straight away to do a number of different things. I can import scenes from books that I own within D&D um, &D Beyond. I can also look at some pre-generated ones available through above VTT, or I can use custom URLs. Now for custom URLs, what that means is if you've got that image on your desktop, um, you can't pull it straight in. It needs to be available on the internet. So for me, what I have is I have my, uh, my Google Drive and I put my files on there and I allow that to share with anybody that has a, has a access to it with by, via the link. I can then use that link and put it in here as a custom URL that then VTT will be able to pick up and use my image for it. Really important if you are sticking it on any drives like Google Drive, you need to make sure that that is it, you, that you share it through your drive. So Google Drive automatically leaves it as private unless you choose to share it. If you leave it as private, VTT, but VTT won't be able to access it and it will fail to load your maps and you'll be scratching your head going, what have I done wrong? It really is that simple. Just remember to do it. Um, and there's about um, being able to uh, import as well. So as you can see, we have some ones that recently I've accessed and looked at for various different reasons and things. But I'm going to go to one of my uh, top left here, D&D &D Beyond Sourcebooks. And this is going to show me sourcebooks that I have access to. I want to find Stormwreck Isle. Where is it? Oh, it's under Adventures, of course. Uh, da, 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 normally near the bottom. Dragons of Stormwreck Isle, just here in the middle. I'm going to click on that. And look, it gives me the breakdown of all of the chapters with all of the various pictures and images from it. Now, bottom right here, this is what I want. I want the Stormwreck Isle map. Now, notice this is the DM map. I'm going to import this. Uh, on the right hand side, it has imported it. It's called it Map 1 Stormwreck Isle by default. Um, but it's not showing us because neither the DM is looking at it or the players. So these two icons is whether the DM can see it and whether players can see it. And at the moment, both of them, you can see by the red labels, are looking at the tavern. So let's look at the this from the DM point of view. And straight away, this is showing us our version, the DM version of this map. Uh, which has got the Seagrow Caves marked on it and the Observatory, etc. Okay, so the player's version at the moment, um, they don't have one. Okay, so what's important is we can upload a player's version of the map and use it for the DM as well, or we can upload separate maps. And that might be slightly confusing, but let me show you what I mean. So this cog on the right-hand side here, if I right-click, I can go to Edit, and this brings up this essentially the scene management thing. So this is where I can change the title. And this is where, see, look, it's asking, it's telling me this is the map link. And this is the DM only map link. And they're the same. That means the players currently are seeing this, this version of the map. Because I've only had one version of the map. I don't want them to be able to do that. What I want the players to do is to see a version of that that doesn't have those markers on it. So in my Google Drive, uh, I'm just checking which one it is on the other screen, I have done that. Um, I've got that uploaded in my Google Drive, I've got it shared, and I have just copied the link for it. So this top one here, I don't want my players using that. I can literally post that link in and save. 
it's going to quickly reload it hopefully quickly do, do, do. and it looks exactly the same the reason it looks the same is because this is the dm version i didn't change the dm map only the player one so how do we know what the players can actually see <laughs> so back to my front page of vtt the easiest way to check it is i can go to this character a join above vtt as that player so i always do this when i'm creating in uh, above vtt i always have a player version uh, and as you can see we've got a lot of the same things but we haven't got a lot of those dm controls uh, we don't have a seams up here we do have a copy of the log uh, you notice i can't see anything in dragons of storm wreck isle because the player shouldn't be able to but there's certainly stuff we could have in here. The players might have notes and stuff you want to share with them. Uh, and if I go to the icons, I haven't got monsters and things. I've only got my player list, including the DM. So why can't this person see anything? Well, it's because if I slide that over to one side for a moment, go back to here. They are currently, I've got them looking at the tavern, um, but they don't have a token. There's no token on the scene. Let's change that to change the player scene to match this map. Now, as that's loading in the other window, just drag that back. Da da! Now you can see that this is the. Again, okay, I can just centralize that. This is the player's version. Hasn't got those marks on it. So that's what the player is going to see when I move them to this scene. There's nothing on here, which is what I want. Now the drawback is is unlike in foundry i can't put uh, map pins that i can share and unshare with the players I, you can't do that in vt in, above vtt the same way so this is a static map that will just stay as it is um, the only way i could do that is potentially later on once they've found everything i could share this dm version with them okay so it does um, does have its limitations it's nowhere near as powerful as um, foundry but hey, it depends what you want. Remember, this is free. Okay, so I can create that nice and easy. Um, not going to worry about um, putting tokens and things on this one because this is just a map to look at. Uh, we don't need to worry about grids and everything else. It's only got the grid that the picture's on. But let's pull in one more to have a little look at. So again, in my Stormwreck Isle folder, I'm going to click on Create New Scene. And again, I can go to my ones that I already have. Get rid of that um, and I want to come down to Stormwreck Isle uh, and I can go to Dragon's Rest or let's uh, let's yeah let's let's do uh, let's do Dragon's Rest so we've got the map 2 over here so this scene has a DM map let's import that map it doesn't automatically change it okay because again we're still on the Stormwreck Isle map but if I change the DM1 to Dragon's Rest this is the one from the module. It's got the A1 already on it, so we haven't got to add that on like we did in Foundry. It's got some height things. We can see everything here. Now, if I click the players one and make that active as well, let's have a quick look and see. Oops, I've lost the, uh, I've lost my player. Where are you? Over here. This is automatically, because it's direct from the module, it's automatically bought in the players one. So in this case, because it's from an official module that has a player and DM version, above VTT is smart enough to go, hang on a minute, I'm going to pull in two different versions of the map. You don't need to upload a separate one. Here's the player's version of it. Now, of course, at the moment, the players can see everything um, and can move around. Okay, move that out of the way. We obviously want to make some alterations to this. If I right click on this, uh, let's, uh, let's find a token first. Um, da, 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 da. What was the name of my player? I've forgotten what her name was. It was Valanth. Uh, oh, not bringing that up there. How bizarre. Get close monsters, I don't want that. Uh, that's my tokens that I've added for other things. Okay. Why have I not got Valanth showing? Oh, and it might be because I haven't refreshed or something. Or it might be because... How strange, I've not had that before. Let me just control F5 and just see if we can refresh this. 
and make sure that this is bringing everything in. Reloads quite quickly. There it is. Um, and I think it's because I'd already joined as the DM before I had added that character the, to the campaign. So uh, I could just drag over here and here we go. I've got a token. Now let's zoom in a bit just to make it a bit easier. Um, we've got this issue, same as in Foundry. Look at the size of that token compared to the grid. And this character is not locked to the grid. Okay, so we need to make some alterations to our map just like we did in Foundry regarding that grid. So if I right click and go to the edit, bring this screen up again, I can rename it. I can change the map links. Uh, if I've got a DM map, I can leave that on. But you can see here I can disable token vision and light if I want to. But it's also got this snap to grid. Yes, I want them to snap to grid. So if I just save that with snap to grid, it's going to reload the scene, which makes perfect sense. I can see on the other screen it's reloading it for the player as well. This player is now snapping to grid but the grid's not the right size. Okay, so we need to fix that. Right click, edit. Obviously, normally I would do this in one particular thing. Now there is a couple of ways of doing this. You can draw your grid, you can use manual grid, but this super mega grid wizard is actually really quite useful. So you can see it's given me, I can't zoom in while I'm doing this, so apologies if it's not, not, uh, not brilliant, but I've got this green one here and I need to match that at, so I'm looking at the gray grid just underneath here, and I'm trying to match this as close as I can to the top corner of that. This is currently my grid size. Now I'm gonna move the other one in here, and I want my green squares to match with those ones in the background as much as possible. And that looks pretty good to me. Uh, and now I can just do save going to reload it and in theory let's move my character for me in theory that should be a pretty good match now I don't always get this right first time and I haven't this time <laughs> always on seems to be pretty good the vertical not so much um, so we can just keep adjusting that if we need to I didn't do it particularly well Okay, let's do it somewhere where I can see the grid lines a bit clearer. Uh, it's not particularly easy on this map, to be honest. I don't want to do that. So bringing that in. So I think it's that top one was throwing me out. That one in a little bit. Uh, and if we look over here, does that square look like it's overlapping correctly? What about up here? Not quite, you can see our red ones are not quite overlapping there the way we want them to. Oh, it's so close. Fiddly, isn't it? Doing grids is a nightmare. Grids are so challenging. it looks perfect you let go and then it's not slightly slightly off uh, that's going to be good enough don't want to waste your time while you watch me spend hours and hours and hours doing this um, so we can match up square grid like that that's good enough for this purpose let's run with it what you will notice is you do have the ability to try and match to a hex um, either a horizontal or a vertical hex grid not just a square which is quite useful so we're going to save that and let's just pretend that that's good enough it's, it's pretty close are the players going to care that much? And now I keep scrolling, want to scroll in and out on the map like you do in Foundry. Uh, and now you can see that it's going to lock our token to that grid, which is what we want. So it's quite simple to do, a little bit fiddly, absolutely, but it was fiddly in Foundry as well. Um, in fact, in Foundry, it was probably more fiddly. Um, but yeah, we've got that now aligned to a grid, which is fantastic. And just like, um, uh, just like in Foundry, we just drag any of our creatures that we want to directly onto here and they will automatically now fit into that grid um, and if you drag larger things over they will take up more grid space if you remember we dragged on a, a dragon token and it was huge because the dragon was huge um, it's kind of that easy really so um, I'm going to leave this video here for now 
Uh, it's just real basics, how we can bring in maps and things, um, the, basically the strengths and the weaknesses. We've got this walls function, and in the next video, we're going to look at using walls um, in here to enhance that. So if we just pop back to our um, version over here, our, what our player can see, let's make that bigger. Uh, we're center that a bit as well. What our player can see, so this is our player view, this is our player moving around the map. They can see everything at the moment because we don't have walls in place. So in the next one, we'll look at putting walls in and look at um, how they can make this a better experience and uh, with token vision and stuff like that. Uh, I hope this is kind of interesting. Like I say, it's a free free version, really, of Foundry. Um, much skinnier, but uh, not everybody can afford the time or the financial investment to go for something like Foundry. Uh, take care. See you in the next one.